Hi, my name is Nicholas Babaya from the Center for Risk Analysis. Given the vast quantums of stimulus pumped into economies around the world and the vast amounts of debt taken on by governments in light of the COVID-19 pandemic and its associated economic lockdowns, what kind of world economy can we expect to see post-COVID-19? In this clip from a recent interactive webinar, Dr. Franz Cornier explains. Have a look. Number one, I'll make a few points for you. Number one, for 20 years, Western governments have been pursuing a policy of stimulus, which is essentially manufacturing cheap uh, dollars and pouring them into the global economy. That starts with the US trade deficit of 20 years ago. It becomes formal quantitative easing in its own right, and, and now it continues as QE. And I think there's a new phase of it coming, which is going to be great Western government-inspired infrastructure development programs, which is simply a further extension of of quantitative easing. One of the reasons we're a bit upbeat on the on commodities and therefore the RAND is partly something to do with this. All the while, as these dollars are manufactured and poured into the world's economy, they've got to go somewhere. They don't go into the hard economy. They go into, into asset prices and stock markets is a good example. And there's a you can draw some great uh, graphics. A chap who inv advises me on this uh, independently uh, shows a wonderful graph of how American stock markets have done this while wage levels in America have, have done that. In order to sustain uh, this, uh, the risk, of course, is why doesn't it create inflation? It's, it's, I'm, I'm explaining this chap's thesis. I, I, uh, um, why doesn't it cause inflation? And, and his argument is that while vast amounts of money are created, the extent of which that money is lent out, once sort of base money has got into the global economy is lent by banks, the extent to which it's lent out is being reduced. So we don't yet see the effect of inflation. In, 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 in this, but that, that in time will have to happen. It's underpinned by remarkably low interest rates that uh, drive people further into equities and hence inflate asset prices further. And in, if it sounds a bit like, you know, governing Zimbabwe, or Zimbabwe's um, fiscal uh, policies, it's, it's because there are strong areas of commonality. Our concern is that in the longer term, I mean, you can, you can fend this off with more stimulus for a while, but in the longer term, you're creating a massive asset price bubble. And in the fullness of time, as this becomes better understood, uh, the world will see a terrible uh, economic uh, contraction where the full quantum of stimulus injected into the global economy over the past 20 years, much of that has to be regurgitated in a great market crash. Now, timing-wise, it's difficult to say when it's going to happen. Otherwise, uh, that's all I would have said to you this evening. Because it is the thing. If in the, the, sort of the next generation of, of, of people active in the global economy, this will probably be the most important thing to pick, is when does this happen? If you get your timing right on it, you'll do extremely well. If you mess up on the timing, you'll, you'll take a long time to get back to where you were. Sort of great asset price contraction, 30 50% fall away. Into the short term, no, probably not because central banks around the world continue to pour stimulus into the system. Uh, into the medium term becomes more of a prospect, but it's very hard for us to think that through the longer term, sort of the decade and beyond, that that contraction won't play out. That's part one of my answer. Part two of my answer, and it only has two parts, is begin to familiarize yourselves more and more with what are called the culture wars and, and their implications. They Sweeping, I, I was briefed terribly well on, on this about a week ago, I mean, not for the first time, but terribly well a week ago. The, the culture wars are really an attempt in the Western world to reset, to use uh, your term, to, to reset the, the, the rules and norms and institutions that underpin liberal democracy. To do away with the idea that the individual is the most important unit of analysis in a society, instead to class society into two hostile camps, perpetrators and, and victims, the perpetrators responsible for the poverty of the victim, and these are, are groups that are biologically determined, uh, whether you fall into the one or the other, and that neither party can leave its group, you can't become virtuous if you're a perpetrator, you can't become successful if you're a victim until the underpinnings of liberal democracy themselves are broken down. And the confluence of these two great uh, mega trends are, uh, uh, if, if you get your long-term global calls right, 
it will be because you got your head around a proper understanding of these two big global trends and when and how they are likely to intersect. The last thing, Nick, and then back to you again, is sometimes when we're finished with our clients, they don't understand much more about the world than we started. And I think sometimes they understand even less than when they got into the briefing. And we don't mind that. I think too many analysts make the world easy to understand. They, they give the world neat little sort of hospital corners and clear answers to complex questions. And uh, those analysts are just often flat wrong. And the advice they offer, you know, Cyril Ramaphosa will be a great reformer, et cetera. COVID will bring about a global uh, collapse economically, a depression for a decade. They're wrong in those calls. And, um, and we, we as analysts are, are inadequate in the sense that I don't think we are often very good at making the world make complete sense to a client in a briefing. But I think the pieces of information we provide that client with and the uncertainty that creates are the critical ones from which to take strategic decisions and uh, pieces of information that if you master them, mean that more times than not, you're going to get your big global geostrategic calls right. Thanks for watching another CRA video. If you enjoy our content, please give this video a like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. For more access to strategic intelligence services, please follow the link in the description for our exclusive 30-day free trial.